I'm Tom Mealy. Welcome to another edition of the Long Island View. Hi, I'm Tom Mealy, and this is another edition of the Long Island View. I want to thank our viewers from Long Island and around the world for watching us tonight. Tonight I have a very special guest with me, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start off by telling you his name, Carlo Valerio. Now, lately, if you watch the news as I do, especially CNN or uh, Fox 5, or even the, uh, the, the show Help Me Howard on PIX11, you would have known the name Carlo Valerio by an incident that happened back in, uh, in November of 2015. I'm going to tell you what happened, and then I'm going to introduce this guest, because this has got to be one of the most ludicrous things I've ever heard in my life. And being involved with law for the past 30 years, I have to say that I highly sympathize with him, and something needs to be done. You know, there's a point where you break the law and you pay the price. But then there's another point when you are an actor and all you're simply doing is your job and the producer fails to help out or do what is proper and the actor then becomes the victim in this particular case. So I'm going to tell you what happened. And then we're going to introduce Carlo. Back on November 16, 2015, Carlo was, um, was filming a, uh, a show in Woodbridge, New Jersey. And um, I'm not quite sure of the name of the show, but we'll get into it. But let me, let me give you the scenario of what happened here. He's filming this show in Woodbridge, New Jersey. Now, if you know anything about New Jersey and, stuff in, and the gun laws in New Jersey, there is a zero tolerance for guns, which means that under the Graves Act in New Jersey, if you've got a BB gun, you've got a water pistol, you've got a real gun, or you have a machine gun, it's the same law and the same laws apply. So if you're walking around Woodbridge, New Jersey with an M16 and you get caught, the sentence is five years in jail. If you're walking around Woodbridge, New Jersey with a water pistol, the sentence is five years in jail. That is what the Graves Act is in New Jersey. And what happened to him is a simple actor, somebody who's just trying to get by, somebody who's mastering his craft, gets hired by a company by the name of AJ um, Epic Production. AJ Epic Production, and the producer's name was Andre Joseph. Now, Andre hires him and says, come to Woodbridge. We want your talent. We're going to put in your hand a small unarmed BB gun without any BBs in it, and we want you to play a part in this upcoming role. Well, Carlo does that, and the next thing you know, Carlo winds up in jail. Now, news, um, from what I understand, CBS picked it up, um, Channel 9 picked it up, Fox 5 picked it up, and Help Me Howard picked it up. And they all did a story on what happened to Carlo next, and that's what we're going to get into. So it's my pleasure to introduce to you Carlo Valerio. Did I do that right? Absolutely. See, I'm good. I'm Spot getting better on. at names. You're hired. You know, I got to tell you, <laughs> and then I'm going to ask you to tell us about this story. You're an actor. Right. Comedian first. Acting was something I decided to do secondhand. I've done a lot of it, but one of my goals was to do more coming into the new year. More acting? Yes. And, uh, and this guy, um, what's his name? Uh, what's Andre. It? Andre Joseph yeah. calls you up one day, mm -hmm. and what does he say? Well, I, I, actually, I saw it, what happened is I'm a member of a group on Facebook that posts his casting calls. And every time there's something going on, they, they post. So there was a posting there for his movie. They were looking for bodyguards for a drug dealer. So I submitted for it. Subsequently, I got casted. Uh, that's fine. It was a Monday afternoon. I wasn't doing anything. The, the whole rub of this whole thing is no pay. There was no You're not money. getting paid for Copy this. and credit. You know, sometimes I take a chance on stuff like that because, and I don't like to do that, but, you know, sometimes these small movies, they get, they get put into film festivals and they blow up. And it seemed like a good idea. It seemed like a cool movie. I said, why not give it a shot? I didn't even think I was going to get picked, first of all. Well, you so, do look like you do look a little like a mobster. Well, yeah, that's... I, you know, I, I grew I, up I get, with mobsters, so right. I, I have an idea. 
Uh, well, I grew, I grew, I, I lived with one and, all my life. And you life. do look like it. If you, if you give me that nasty look, I could actually picture. Yeah, see, that's the look right there. Yeah. Watch out for this guy. My father was one of those. So, guys so this guy sure. Andre calls you up. You go for the casting call. Now, Andre, from what I understand, this guy Andre Joseph, he does a lot of a lot of independent films. Yeah, I mean, if you go on his website and look, it looks like he's does a semi decent job at what he does. So he's not an unknown. No, I, you know, I didn't know him, but I mean, he's an unknown as far. I mean. There's a lot of those kind of people doing independent movies. And I support everybody doing films. I support comics doing their thing. Uh, you know, so I get kids, I show up. Um, our scene that I was involved in was a car chase scene. It was simulated. So we had a car. One guy driving, I was the passenger. They hand me the prop gun. Who hands you the prop gun? The couple of people on the production set. I don't remember their names offhand, but just people that were setting up the cameras and stuff. They and had, Andre knew that this prop gun was part of the part of the event yeah it was part of the scene there was a bunch of guns used in the movie as part of uh, props use but this was happened to be the one that I was going to handle so our scene was to, we drove around a residential area of Woodbridge New Jersey um, and I, all I had to do was just lean over out the window and pretend like I'm shooting I didn't fire any projectiles they were going to dub in the sound afterwards was there anything in the gun no were there any BBs in the gun no was the, was the gun in, um, a real BB gun where if you wanted to put BBs in, you could? I didn't invest it. I don't know because I didn't really. See, I was just, when I show up, I'm just ready to do my scene. I didn't really, I just grabbed it and go, oh, cool. It had a little weight to it. It had a little realism to it, like a lot of the prop guns do. They look and feel like the real thing. And, it, you know, sometimes the BB guns have the orange tip on them. This didn't have that. So we shoot the scene. We, we drive around in a four or five block radius. And I'm just like this, and we're driving. You know. Now, let me, let me stop you for a second, because uh, I, I, want, I want the folks to visualize yeah. this. So you're in this car. Where's the camera? What happened is they put, uh, there was two guys in the back, the director of photography and a production assistant. They each had the cameras on, one on me and one on the driver, like GoPros. Right. That's how they filmed the shot. Um, so so there, was no, there was no front lead car. In this no, no, shot. there was no actual car that we were chasing. Okay, so you were they that view of you on camera is being shot from the rear seat. Right. Okay. I apparently I think they were I think what was gonna happen was um, once we finished that scene, there was gonna be a scene where there was gonna be one mounted to the hood and there was gonna be some footage shot of, of that view. That's edited in, in during right. the editing phase. Right. So we filmed the scene, all is well. Uh, we get back to where we were staged. Uh, next thing I know, the, there's eight cop cars surrounding the set. Um, they're, and they're amp now, bear in mind, when this happened in November, this was at the time of the Paris attacks. So everybody but, but, was... But let, me, but let me ask you something. How many times did you circle this particular area? How many, how many times did you... I know that in movies, and um, we're going to get into that later on, but I know that they shoot these scenes time after time. After, how many times did you shoot this shot? realistically we were there maybe five to seven minutes we only shot like down a couple of blocks we went weaved in and out of some residential streets we weren't on the main thoroughfare apparently three residents saw this got panicked and called the cops and you know what rightly so if I was one of them and I seen this I would have probably because there was really unless you were looking directly into the cab of the truck you probably wouldn't have seen the cameras so they don't know they don't know. So they so, call the cops. But isn't normal protocol for a director or a producer, and I, I know quite a few of them. Um, one does a show right here at, uh, at the studio on Saturday. Isn't it protocol to let the residents know that this is a shoot, this is a movie shot? Is that protocol in any type of movie? It, you don't know because you're an actor. I don't know if I'm an actor, but I know now that it most definitely is. The, the, the onus is on the production company. They have to get permits. They have to know, they ha and if they're going to have any kind of firearms, replica or not, there's got to be police on this set. Like, i tell you the difference between, an, I do Law and Order SVU as an extra, and, and Tom, when I tell you if I have to wear any kind of uniform, if I go outside, turn your jacket inside out, they take the firearms from you, they're very professional. That's the difference. So now, let's backtrack a little bit. The residents call the cops, the cops show up. Like I said, this was at the time when the Paris attacks happened in France. Everybody was amped up. They come up, well, okay, who was driving this truck? Where's the guy with the gun? And I was standing right there. I was still in, actually, I was wearing this jacket. And I said, sir, officer, I said, I I'm right here. This is, a we're actors, we're doing a movie. I said, the gun that you're talking about is right here. It's a prop gun. Relax. I took it out, so I handed it to him. 
Wait a minute, wait a minute. I want to back up a little bit because this, this is very, very important. Did Andre Joseph pull permits? No. That's was, was, he, was he supposed to pull permits? Absolutely. So Andre Joseph, who is the producer and the director of this film, never spoke with any of the authorities to let them know this was going on. He did not have a permit to film. And is it, is it an actor's responsibility that an actor question this, or does an actor just go on the scene? And I know that the next segment is going to be with Jerry Parisi, who is a filmmaker. So I'm sure he's going to get more into, into what's going on with that. But is it the actor's job to question the producer or the director as to the legalities of what's happening on the scene? No. It's not. If you, I'll give you an example. Robert De Niro doesn't go up to Marty Scorsese. Marty, you, you got your permits today, right? It's just not done. You don't do that. It's not my, I'm there to do a job. I'm to act and to leave. That, all the legalities and all that other stuff is not my job to know. In hindsight, now it's going to be, because of what happened, I'm going to be extra, and I, I encourage other actors to take precautions when you're doing, I understand you all want to be stars and everything and you want to get fame, but you know what? Is it worth your freedom? No. Yeah, you know, so, you know. He didn't have a permit. He didn't have a permit for the prop gun, which turned out to be a pellet gun. And like Tom explained earlier, in New Jersey, you might as well have had an assault rifle. Okay, so the police arrive on the scene. I want to go step by step. The police arrive on the scene. They ask who has the gun. Uh, they stop the vehicle. Did the police have their weapons drawn? No, no. We were out of the vehicle. You were out of the vehicle. We were standing around waiting. Wait, to how, sit, many, uh, how many cars showed up? Like five or six. How many people in each car? I, there was about eight to ten cops there. Because okay, they, when the, when those cops came out, uh, obviously they were uh, they, they were, were uniformed. charged up. Yeah, they were uniform. Yeah. And did any of them have their weapons drawn? No, they just rolled up. Uh, they seen people talking. They came. They came like charged up, like like with energy, like as, like asking me the questions. And like I I, I was very for I was very respectful, so I gave him the the gun. Um, you didn't give them that mops to look, though, when you No, 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 no. I very, just want to make sure, because that would scare me. <laughs> no. And then I'd shoot you. <laughs> yeah, I always right, carry piano string in my car just in case. But... <laughs> okay, but, so they show up. So they start questioning everybody, and they put me on the hood of the car, like, sequestered from everybody. Me and the other guy who was the driver. Okay. So they start talking. Next thing I know, I'm in handcuffs. I'm like, what's going on? You're under arrest for possession of a weapon. Now, I don't understand some. First of all... As soon as the cops came there and found that this was a movie shoot, give Andre a ticket for not having a film. Why are you arresting me once you ascertain that I'm not a threat and I'm not, you know, a danger and, and, and the production company is a jackass for not doing things the proper way? They arrest me for possession of a weapon. Nobody else got arrested. Between eight to ten people from cast and crew, I was the only one carted away. Because you had the weapon. Technically, it was in my possession. You know, I didn't go off set with it where we were staged. I didn't go running around the streets with it. But if you would have left it in the car, then most likely Andre would have got arrested. Well, they would have still asked me who had it. And I would have, what was I going to, I can't yeah, you lie. You know what I'm saying? Truth. You so, tell the um, it, it, and it's just, it, you know, it was so surreal because, it, like, you go, I was coming off a career high performance in Pennsylvania that Saturday. That Monday, I'm sitting in a jail cell. So let's, let's, let's talk about this. Um, did you call Andre, or did Andre see you get placed in the squad car? Oh, absolutely. Did Andre offer any assistance to the police? Did he say, listen, you know, it's my gun, it's my shoot? See, this is what I don't understand, Tom, because I got put in the car, and the cops were still milling about speaking to everyone. So I don't know what was said. For all did I know... Did you see a cop speaking with Andre Joseph? Oh, yeah. I... And, did, and did Andre... Um, do you know if Andre said anything to the cop that it was my gun? I don't know. I, I, he, if he was any kind of respectable person, all right, he would so have let's, said... so let's go forward. Now they take you down to the precinct. Right. They fingerprint you. They mug shoot you. They put you in a holding cell. What happens? I, I call my girlfriend um, and tell her what happened. And as a comedian, she thinks everything I'm doing is a joke, so she doesn't believe me at first. I'm like, Joe, it's serious. Um, they came back with a $10,000 bail. And I had, I had a fine from another court on top of that for, uh, for $1,000, which my girlfriend paid. It has nothing to do with this. So, either, so I had to pay two bails. So my girlfriend says, look, he was there doing your movie. He's got a $10,000 bill, no 10%. Who did she say that to? She called Andre. 
She calls Andre and she lets Andre know it's a $10,000 bail. He, and he's like, all right, we'll see what we can do. We'll send the bail bondsman down there. Now, she's waiting down there an hour. She's expecting me to be released. Um, he gets a phone call. We don't have that kind of money. We're not sending nobody. You're on your own. The producer doesn't bail you out? No. My girlfriend luckily found a bail bondsman that does like 2.5%. Thank God. And, and she had to run around for four days trying to raise bail so, money. So, 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 so let me get this straight now. The producer... And the director, Andre Joseph, mm -hmm. of this Epic Productions, mm -hmm. J, what is it, JP Epic Productions? AJ Epics Productions, yeah. Is involved with this whole thing. His actor gets arrested because of his negligence, and he doesn't come out and help you. No. He wouldn't even give my girlfriend. You know how sometimes as actors you go on a, stay, a set, you'll have a garment bag or a duffel bag if you have costume suit changes? He wouldn't even give her my personal property. And I sat in Middlesex County Jail in Woodbridge, New Jersey, for four days. I want to I do something real quick, folks. I want to put up a picture of, uh, of Andre Joseph right now. Uh, Vicky, do we have that picture? This is Andre Joseph. This is the guy that left my friend Carlo here out to hang inside a jail cell for not one, not two, not three, but four days he was in that jail cell. He was in... It, and this guy does not come out to try to help him, doesn't contact his girlfriend, doesn't go. And this guy is a, is, is a producer, a director. I can tell you right now, folks, I don't think any of his films are going to the Hollywood Walk of Fame. All right. So um, we also have a clip, I believe. I'm not sure. We have a clip of um, Howard from WPIX 11 who actually tried to reach Andre. Yeah. And I'd like to play that clip real quick, and then we're going to come back and continue with Carlo here on what happened next. This is an interesting start. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Watch this clip. Well, stand-up comments are often politically incorrect, but one New Jersey comedian is finding out what it's like to be legally incorrect. And now he's actually facing the possibility of doing some serious time behind bars. He turned to help me, Howard, in order to get his story out. You guys are a great crowd, I gotta tell you. Uh, you're, you're better than the crowd I had last night. Last night I had to do a show for 900 Jehovah Witnesses. <laughs> oh, it was a nightmare. All they wanted to hear were knock knock jokes. Carlo Bellario is a working stand up comedian and part time actor. He bills himself as Tony Soprano meets Sam Kinison. This is my full time gig. I'm not working at a construction site during the day, and I don't... The story Carlo is about to tell may have its comedic moments, but it's no laughing matter. It all started on this street in Woodbridge, New Jersey, back in November, when Carlo decided to appear in a low-budget, no-budget film. He is trying to expand and already has done some acting. Our scene was a simulator car chase scene. I had to sit with another guy. Another guy was driving. I was in a passenger seat, and we just drove around this neighborhood here. Picture this. Carlo's driving down the street in a yellow pickup truck with his hand out the window, a gun in his hand, pointing it, pretending he's shooting. I guess you can understand why residents here were a little upset. They call the police, we get back, and we're surrounded by cop cars. This would be a good time to tell you about the Graves Act. Frank Graves was the colorful mayor of Patterson and a state senator. The law named after him makes New Jersey one of the toughest gun control states in America. A gun is a gun. You've got an air pistol, BB gun, guess what? It's considered a real gun. You still need a permit for it. The producer didn't have a permit to film, mm -hmm. didn't have a permit for that gun, which turned out to be a BB gun. It wasn't just a prop gun. Mm -hmm. Now, because of that, uh, I'm looking at five years because it's a second degree crime. Five to ten years, actually. Carlo was charged with unlawful possession of a weapon and was thrown in Middlesex County Jail where he spent four days. He calls my job and he says he's under arrest. I'm like, for what? Carlo's girlfriend, Gisela, couldn't believe what she was hearing when Carlo made his obligatory phone call. He's like, uh, for a gun possession. I'm like, yeah, okay, stop playing. He's like, listen, I'm really not playing. You have to come here and bail me out. Gisela is calling Carlo's friends to help him make bail. But one guy wanted uh, favors. Like something that I would never do, you know, compromising myself for somebody. That's horrible. Horrible. So then I, now His I'm, friends? His, his friend from, like, high school that he's really good friends with. But what about the executive producer? Some guy named Andre Joseph. She calls Andre, and he's like, yeah, don't worry. I'll send somebody down to bail him out. When he found out the bail amount, that was it. He didn't want to, he says, I ain't bailing him out. 
Gisela and her family cobbled together what they could to meet the minimum requirement. Okay, we cut that clip short, and that's courtesy of uh, PIX11 uh, News. Help me, Howard, who does the show. You know, you can watch the whole clip if you get on YouTube. I want to get back to it because we have a few minutes left here. Very important. Yeah. I, I find it despicable that this guy, Andre Joseph, left you to dry. Now, the biggest problem is, is that this crime is on the books in New Jersey. And I know that, you know, anytime you have a, uh, a standing statue or there is um, a, a law such as the Graves Act, there is very little anybody can do about it. No. You yeah. were in possession of a weapon as far as they're concerned, and theoretically, you can get five years in jail. And, and just, uh, Tom, just to, to be upfront, because I'm not one of these people that I like to let everything out and be upfront of that. I have priors. I'm not supposed to touch a gun. But I did not know, if I had I known it was a real gun or something that could jeopardize myself, I would have not have touched it. Are these priors in the state of Jersey? Yes. Okay. okay. Oh, you, you live in Jersey? Yes. Born and raised in Newark, New Jersey. Moved to New York or Virginia? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> But, but, all right, so, so you have some other underlining issues here. Yeah, and, it, you know, and their whole thing is that um, the possession thing, and it's in the hands of somebody who's challenged. I did not know that. I was there to do a role. I wasn't there. I wasn't a gangbanger driving around the streets causing a riot. You know, I was just, an, I'm a comic. I've been a comic since 1987, and I've been an actor for about the past 10 years doing little stuff, trying to build and build and build, you know, and... I go from, like I said, doing a career high gig to sitting in a jail cell four days. My girlfriend tried to raise the bail money. I had like some of my people I know for 30 years telling me, "I'll give you the money if you proposition in my girlfriend." Like this is this is this is the like this is the lowest level of. Uh, besides of whatever on my plate, I gotta come home and hear that. You know what I'm saying? What do you think is gonna happen here, Carlo? I mean, you got some serious charges, and I don't mean, I don't want to scare you. Um, you know, I know that uh, being in the business of law here in the state of New York, you know, uh, what I think is going to happen is uh, I think it's based on circumstances. My problem is the prior history. Yeah. All right. Even though it was a BB gun, I don't think it's going to come back to haunt you too much. But um, and again, you know, this is I, I I'm not involved with criminal law. Um, you know, the law firm that I work for, they do a lot of criminal law, but. Um, I think that the charges are very, very serious. You know that. Yeah. No, I, I'm. The charges can put you away for five years. You know, I think about, I still haven't wrapped my head around this. I'm still waiting for Ashton Kutcher to jump out and tell me I yeah, got punked. Yeah, that you got punked. Yeah. But I think the reality of what's going to happen here is I think that Carlo has a, uh, a good story. I think that he was a victim. I think that this guy, Andre Joseph, is an ass. Um, I think that, um, you know, he should have done something to step up to the plate. And I think most of all, Andre Johnson, Andre Joseph, Joseph, Joseph should be in that courtroom and should go up to the district attorney or the prosecuting attorney and say, listen, this was my gig. This was my deal. All right. I was the one who set this up. But it sounds to me that this guy wants to play the game, but he doesn't want to pay for the musicians. So, you know, I think he's a dirtbag, and it's just my opinion. It's not the opinion of the station. Um, I think this guy should step up to the plate and, and help you out. Now, let me ask you, what happened? Has Andre contacted you? No. The only so, so he hasn't even called you to discuss this with you? The only time I saw him is when I first got released because uh, he, wouldn't rele he wouldn't release my personal property to my girlfriend. Why? I have no idea. So I had to meet him in a Target parking lot, and he sat, stood there with his hands in his pocket, scared out of his mind because I was going to snap and, and, and just... But you know what? I, the calmer heads prevailed, and I said, you know what? I'm in enough trouble as it is. I'm so sorry about what happened. Uh, you know, I said, Andre, you better do something about this because this is serious. He's like, yeah, all right. Yeah. And I never heard him. He doesn't answer no media inquiries. And, and Do you know if he's represented by an attorney? I have no idea. Uh, we'll know soon enough. As an, why? He's not being charged. I, I got a feeling that this is going to wind up falling on him, hopefully. They're going to have to, they're going to, have to train. Now, listen, the problem I mean, is... I mean, what, what baffles me about Jersey, and first of all, I got a thing with Jersey. 
You know, um, I, I got a ticket there one time, and, you know, I went to the highest people I could go to, and I still got nailed for the ticket. But what, what, what bothers me about New Jersey is that they haven't even given this guy a ticket. No. He was filming without a license. He had props there without permits. He, he, he was in a, in a neighborhood where he should have notified the neighbors and the people of what was going on. Right. And this guy walks, and an innocent guy like you, who's just trying to, you know, I'm sure that you, I know you comics. You comics, you know, you live paycheck to paycheck to right. paycheck. Exactly. It's tough. And, and here you are, an innocent bystander, that technically you can do five years in jail. I was struggling as it is, like you said, you know, and this put me in a deeper hole because I had to borrow, I had to beg, borrow, and steal from relatives that didn't have it just to get myself out. I had to go to a bail bondsman and pay that, and, and it just put me in a hole. I lost a lot of money. I, I couldn't leave the state to travel, so I lost money earning on my case because comedy, like I said, is my full-time job. And I just want to make it clear, Tom, that I'm not vilifying the cops. I have no issues with the prosecutors. I know, understand they got to do what they got to do, but just please realize that this is frivolous, and you can probably spend the taxpayers' money a little better. And, you know, listen, I paid my debt to society. I don't care what it says. I didn't do it. You can look my record up. I have nothing on there that's gun-related, drug-related, no SVU crimes or anything like that. All stuff that I used to do when I was a kid, and it was, it's all stupid stuff that I should have known better, okay? And I admit that, and I'm sorry, but at the time when this happened, I was doing what I was supposed to do. I wasn't attempting to break the law. I had no knowledge I was breaking the law, and I understand, oh, uh, ignorance. But I just want to go back to doing my comedy and doing my acting, and... Um, I had to belittle myself, and then I had to put up a GoFundMe page because I need a lawyer. I just can't go with a public defender, Tom. This is my freedom we're talking yeah, about this here. this certainly is. I, you know, Carlo, we, we have a few seconds left here, and, you know, I have to defend the, the police department. I know that you're upset with them. You know, the police are, are, are ruled by, by the state, and if the state says that there is a law and you break the law, the police have to act on it. It is not their fault that they did their job. No, I, I really don't have do an issue job. with them. I and understand I would that. Bet, I would bet that while that was going on, most likely those police, that police, one of the police officers may have been on the phone uh, or on the radio explaining the situation. Unfortunately, when you have a law on the books, whether it's in the state of New York, state of New Jersey, or Nevada, or anywhere in the country, the police department must act on the law, and, and that's what they did. They did their job. I'm sure they didn't want to do their job. I, and I agree with you. And, and I know a lot of police officers that don't. I have a very close friend. I carry a badge in my wallet, and she tells me all the time, you know, there's sometimes that I just want to turn my back and walk the other way, but I can't. You can't. Because it's their job that's on the line. So be that as it may. Listen, guys, let me tell you, I, I, I appreciate, first of all, you coming on the show and telling us. My the pleasure. Story. Thank you. And, and, and for all you folks out there who are watching, you know, I think that um, I think it's important that this guy, Andre, be accountable or at least be questioned by the authorities as to what happened. And I'll say it again. This guy wants to dance, but he doesn't want to pay for the music. This guy got hurt. He can lose his career. He can do five years in jail. He can lose everything that he's built over the past 20 years as a comic and an actor because some jackass decides that he does and he feels he's above the law and doesn't want to go out and get the proper permits that are required to do a shoot that he ultimately is going to benefit financially for. So with that, I'm going to leave you. This is Tom Mealy, another edition of Long Island View. For those of you watching on a Madhouse TV, stay tuned. Jerry Parisi is up next, and he's got a whole different take on this thing. For those on Cablevision, we'll see you next week. This is Tom Bealey from Madhouse TV Studios in Deer Park signing off. Be safe. We'll talk to you next week. What's the exact street? Well, if anybody and... knows Amity Village, Amityville Village, you know that you know Broadway is an extension of Route 110. Okay. So if you take 110 South all mm. the way to the very end, you're going to come to a point where there's a split in the road, and there's a beautiful white gazebo 
that sits right in the heart of the village. So if you take 110 South and you go underneath the railroad trestle and you're down in the village itself, as soon as you get to that split, before you go to the right or the left of the, of the beautiful gazebo that's sitting there, we are directly on the left-hand side. We took over the old Lang shoe store. So people that remember Lang's from, I mean, they've been in business since 1929. Wow. And have been in Amityville Village since 1929. So um, they weren't at the store. We, they were across the street, but they moved uh, across to where the spot we were in 1962. So they were Lang shoe store from 1962 in that spot all the way up to five years ago. In fact, there's such a, um, a, uh, a buzz about Lang that somebody actually bought the sign that says Lang's since really? 1929. Wow. So it was an antique item that uh, they're going to be taking down off the building soon. I'm going to do a live commercial. Hi, I'm Renee Marie, the president and founder of Renee Marie's Language of Love Foundation. I would like to personally invite you to our annual, second annual, telethon held here, right here on Madhouse TV. Did you know that nearly 80% of strokes could be prevented? By knowing the signs and getting to the hospital within a four and a half hour window, you could save your life or someone's you love life or anyone's life. Strokes do not discriminate who it affects and at what time. A stroke can happen at any time and have a, play a huge impact in your life. Do you know what aphasia is? It is a result of a stroke or brain injury, which affects the ability to speak and communicate. Think about how you would feel if you cannot express yourself, even in the simplest forms. I am blessed to say that I am a stroke survivor and can humbly speak of the experience of how it feels to express myself, to not be able to express myself, and not to understand. It is devastating. Please join Please us on join March 20th, 2016 on Madhouse TV for our Language of Love Telethon, which supports strokes and aphasia. You can visit our website at www languageoflovetelethon.org. Together, we are lifting our voices and changing the face of strokes and aphasia around locally and around the globe. God bless you, and I'll see you on Madhouse TV on March 20th, 2016. God bless everybody. Ciao.
Tom Bailey, welcome to another edition of the Long Island. Welcome to the Long Island View. I'm Michelle Parisi, sitting in for Tommy Marr. And I'm Joyce Philbin. I'm sitting in for Tom Mealy. And today we have a very interesting guest, Carlo uh, Bellario, who is an actor, um, who was uh, booked on uh, an independent movie, and as a result um, is going through a bit of a nightmare that he's going to tell us a little bit about, um, and is facing up to possibly five years in jail. Um, Carlo, would you like to give us, uh, in a nutshell, what your experience was? Okay. Uh, in November of last year, I got casted to do an independent movie. I was excited about it. Sometimes in, uh, my full-time gig is a comedian, but in between that, I like to do uh, some acting stuff. I wanted to increase my acting reel. Uh, so I got casted for this independent movie. I was to play a bodyguard for a drug dealer. It involved using a prop gun. Uh, we shot the scene in a residential area of Woodbridge, New Jersey. Uh, during this scene, we had it. We uh, it was a car chase scene, so we had to drive around the, the area. And my scene was to just stick my hand out the window and pretend to shoot with the prop gun. And they were going to dub in the sound and the, the car that we were chasing at a later time. We finished the scene. The cops show up. Um, after all the discussion, the cops ascertained that um, the, uh, the producer of the movie and the director did not have a permit to film nor did they have a permit for the prop gun, which turned out to be a BB gun. And in New Jersey, whether you have a BB gun, a toy gun, or an assault rifle, it, you might as well have the same thing. And mm. as a result of that, I was arrested for possession of a weapon, and I'm facing wow. five years in prison. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah. And did the person putting on the production stand behind you in any way? No, I got left hang, hung out to dry. Oh my goodness. Now, is this somebody that does a lot of filming? If you go to his website and look at it, it makes you think like he's like a junior Martin Scorsese up and coming and he's very professional, but it wouldn't seem so in this case. No. Now, no. Um, did you, were you asked to sign any non-disclosure? Is there anything that, you know, you have that would indicate that the production company, you know, was taking this project on and that you were under their umbrella. Well, I signed a waiver in you know, like the, the typical things that you can't talk about it until okay. the right. That's really an understanding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. You know. Right. Um, and uh, other than that, I didn't sign anything. I just you know, but there was no money for this. It Did was, you have a copy of the script? Uh, yes, I do. Okay. I had so, I had a copy of a call sheet too that tells me when and mm -hmm. where to report, okay. who's going to be on what scene, and what props they were. Well, that's use. that's certainly. To your advantage. And, and were there directions the, in the script to tell you that that's what you were directed to do? I asked for a script because you don't need it. He just, he just, they made, they asked me to do a lot of improv. Mm -hmm. They said just sit in the car and banter back and forth with the driver. They wanted it to be funny but serious, like making fun of the way he's driving because I can't hit the car in front of me and just go back and forth at each other like two, two idiot bodyguards that can't get nothing right. So we're, you know. Um, so I, I mostly improv the scene. But uh, you did have the script that says that there was going to be a scene like that. Yeah. And that there's going to be prop guns. Yes. And can well, you, can it would you, seem to me that that would protect you in a lot of ways. Well, I have all the emails that I traded back and forth leading up to the shoot, looking mm -hmm. forward to working with you, this, that, and the other thing. So there's no, there's no, there's no way around it for them. Is he denying that he has a connection with you? He's not, they're not saying anything when, you know, because this thing has been, this thing has gone national. There's a couple of politicians in New Jersey that are getting involved that are like, this is crazy. What's going on here? Sure. Um, and he's not responding to any media. The only thing he's saying is, well, he's not, uh, he's not as, as innocent as he looks because I have uh, a past uh, can, uh, record that, you know, making me look like John Dillinger, but I'm not. I paid mm. my debt and, and, and this was has nothing to do with the issue at hand here. Well, can you just tell me, um, uh, what was it like when the police showed up? What was going through your head? I, I was standing there waiting to do the next scene, and I had the, 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 the gun in my waistband, because I'm still in character, and I'm thinking about, okay, all right, what are we going to do next? Um, they come riding in. And you know what? I'm not, I don't, I'm not mad at the cops, because... They've got a call that there's a guy with a gun. That's their job to respond, you know, and sure. they, they've taken it seriously, and they sh as well they should. Um, but just like I said, 
I've been telling everybody, this happened during the time when the, the terrorist attacks in Paris. So right. everybody was amped up and tensions Absolutely. were high. Yep. Sure. They come riding in and, they, and I'm like, oh, here we go. I was like, these, are, these cops are going to bust our balls about this and, and whatever. And I'm like, ugh. And it turned out to be a lot. I thought they were just going to say, oh, you guys shouldn't be here. Where's your permits? As an actor, I'm not required to know. Now, you were arrested as a result. I got this. arrested for possession of a weapon. And how many other people were arrested? Zero. I was the only one out of a casting crew. Okay. And what about the per are you, would you be able to identify the person who handed you the gun? Oh, yeah. Okay. Absolutely. And that, did that help you at all when you? The, you know what? It's weird. Uh, they did not want to know nothing. They just wanted to arrest me and get me out of there. They had me in the car for like 10 minutes, and then they were still outside talking. And so... For all I know, and like I said, I, I can't prove this, Joyce, um, the, the producer could have threw me under the bus. Right. He right. could have said you it's not know. our gun. You, you have no way of knowing. Producer? Sure. Um, now, okay, you're arrested. They take you away, and you call. I want to bring in Gisela, your girlfriend. Right. Um, what was that like? Well, you know, she, if the first, when I call, she didn't even want me to go that morning. I had an eerie feeling that morning when I dropped him off. It didn't look like a professional set. It was mm. just the street of Woodbridge, New Jersey, and I dropped him off. What and gave you the feeling it wasn't a professional set? I just dropped him off in front of someone's garage, mm. and I didn't see anybody there. I didn't see any signs like production agency or anything. You didn't see any trucks or Nothing. cameras or anything. Right. So I, um, sure. I dropped him off, said goodbye, left. Then he thought they were going to move, so he made me come back. And then when I came back, he's like, never mind, we're going to stay here. And then he kissed me and he said, goodbye, I love you. And I'm saying, not that he doesn't say that to me, but it was just weird. So I left again on my way to work. And, and how was, long was it before you got the phone call? It wasn't that long. It was, um, I dropped him off at 10 a.m. He got arrested like around 12 to 1. 1 o'clock. And yeah. then he mm -hmm. called me at 3. I work at a spa. And, and what was it like for you oh, oh. being the sole person uh, as it wound up being, being responsible for freeing him? It was a lot. And what, what did you need to do? I basically called his mom first. Mm -hmm. um, she didn't believe it either. She thought I was playing a joke she, on her as a comedian. I thought he was <laughs> playing a joke. His mother thought we were playing a joke. So she was like, ah, just leave him in there because he had a past. <laughs> so she's like one of those Italian mothers. If he does something wrong. I'm not bailing There's him out. Right. <laughs> right. So, and then I'm trying no to problem. explain to her the situation, but she's in her 70s, and it's very difficult to understand and wrap herself around why he got arrested, and now it's really not a joke. And what did you need to do, though, in order to free, what, what was the requirement? Well, the f false expectations that I received and a, a phone call from the police officer saying that the producer was going to come bail him out, just make sure you're here by 7. So I was mm -hmm. at peace. And what is the producer's name? Andre, Andre Joseph. Joseph. Yeah. Andre Joseph. So when I went to the police station, I thought I was going just to pick him up. I didn't expect that I had to bail him out. Wow. So, so when then, I, yeah. then Andre Joseph didn't show up. He didn't show up. So the police officer says to me, um, Carlos, you know, in being retained, um, he's very nervous. He goes, I don't believe that the producer is coming. He goes, but here's the phone numbers of the people from the cast. So I started calling. I started with Andre Joseph. I explained to him that the police said, are you you're coming with bail? He says, no, I'm not. And I said, why? He goes, well, he has a past. I'm not going to bail him out. And I said, his past has nothing to do with what happened today. I said, you know, you don't feel a little responsible to bail him out? He said, no. I said, you know, I says, I'm very, you know, insulted by this, especially, you know, I don't know how it went down because I was trying to imagine how this could have happened. And I was picturing all the worst case scenario. And one scenario that came to my mind was if they were, the neighbors called and said there's a gang shooting. And if the police were on scene while he was still in the car with yeah. the fake gun in his hand, he could have ended up being dead. Yeah. If that scene would have ran long, being shot, okay. it might have been a different outcome. And I don't mean. Were there sirens going? I mean, could you hear them coming? No, they just rolled up like with the lights on, but no sirens. But they were coming in fast. There's, there's so much protocol yes. in, in doing a, a shoot there have you know the the town need there needs to be permits 
Everything needs to be laid out. Right. Well, Michelle, that's the problem so, with people doing independent productions. A lot of these guys, they don't have the money, and they try to cut corners. Right. And unfortunately, uh, I'm collateral damage. And you have no way of knowing no. whether they did or didn't get it's, it's an It's not my job to Actually, know. something no. similar like that happened to me and my husband, Jerry. He was on set out east, and they were doing a scene in the woods, and there was a prop gun. And I said to them, the police are going to get called. There were two guys there who were producing it and videoing it. Was this a, a, a gun that made a noise so yes. that people could hear it? Yes. Okay, so even yes. in the woods, though, you attracted attention? It, yeah. That's it was, even, it was a worse. wooded area <laughs> off the Long Island Expressway. Yeah. And I said, and I'm always very nervous about guns because I, I really don't. Anti. Did, did you trip, over, anti did you trip Michelle, over anybody but... rolled up in a carpet out in the woods? <laughs> Well, so, yes, out there, so, it what has hap happened quite a bit. <laughs> what, hap what happened I was, would imagine. What happened was I said, the police are going to get called, and everybody's going, no, relax, don't yeah. worry about it. No sooner do I say it, four squad cars came careening down a hill, jumped out of the, they jumped out of the car, hands on their holsters, said, everybody put your hands up. So we all had to do this. I was holding a camera because I was videotaping B-roll, and... And the, you don't drop the camera no matter no. what. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the police officer said to me, are you videotaping? And I said, no, you can look. No, of course not. You know, and um, he, uh, it was a very, very scary experience. But what he did was he, um, he allowed, the, the police officers allowed it after knowing what was going on. One of the, the other cop cars left one stayed until the end of what we were doing. Well, that and was very nice. I, that's th what, that, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. That's what yeah. it should have been. Yeah. See, that's what I don't understand. Why didn't they, once they found out what happened, once they ascertained that this is a movie and that the production companies are, are, are idiots for not following protocol. Well, hopefully you have enough information to go on and you're going to be able to move forward with this with a, you know, with a good attorney. And well, I'm trying to find an attorney. This, this having to raise bail and borrow money from Peter to pay Paul and, and, and relying on my now, family. Now, is there a GoFundMe um, yes. going on right now? Do you have any information on that that you'd like to, I mean? Yes, it's, um, it's GoFundMe.com mm -hmm. forward slash raw deal. Um, I'm try I, I was going to get a public defender, but I can't, I'm sorry, I can't risk my freedom for. Absolutely. Not for that. And they, yeah. you know what? And they assigned me one because I told them I don't have no money for a lawyer. And on the 25th of November, I get a letter from the public defender saying, all right, I'm going to represent you. Please call my office. I've called him 12 times between when I first got the letter up until January. I never heard back from him. So that's when and I realized I've got to get a lawyer. Do you have a court date coming up yet? I have no dates yet. It's, they don't know what they want to do with it yet. The prosecutor is very angry at me, and I don't vilify the cops or the prosecutor. No, and you're, and you're smart to do that. But I Why have is the prosecutor angry at you? Because of all the press I, I, I'm doing about this. What am I supposed to do? Just lay down and say, okay, take mm. me away for five years. Mm. What, um, have you been reaching out to the media outlets to give them the story? Oh. Um, you know what? When I first happened, I was like, you know what? They're going to realize that this is ridiculous. They're going to drop the charges. I took it too lightly, and I said, you know what, I don't want to deal with this right now. Let me get through the holidays and spend time with my family. And then in January, I'm like, this isn't going away. So I, I, had a, I, had a, I went to a couple of lawyers, and they all want big money. Sure, retainers. Yeah, and, and I have one lawyer that's willing to work with me, but it's still going to cost money, hence the GoFundMe, which is what, you know, and everybody's been so supportive. There's actually two politicians in New Jersey that heard about this, and they're going to start legislation to say, listen, we don't want to weaken gun safety. We just want to make sure that something like this doesn't happen again. And, sure. and it sounds like in your case that really, you know, it, it's not a question of the gun law. It's a question of being logical. Um, and clearly well, it's you were working under, you know, the direction of a production company. Right. And I, I'm a, a member of the Screen Actors Guild. I completely understand that when you go on a set, you are told what to do. You say yes. They say jump. You say how high. Right. And, you know, with the independent films, and I've done a few of those, that, um, you know, the permit thing is wonky. And if you, you know, start to question then it's no big deal for them to pack it up and do it another day without you. What's going to happen is, is that um, even though young actors, whether, what, no matter what age you are, and if you're doing independence or feature films, 
you got to question it. But we know what's going to happen. They're not going to want to do that because then they don't want to get labeled as somebody that's difficult to work with. Right. So these young people right. that are hungry, are, they don't care. But go sit in a jail cell. I mean, it's, right. you so know. people are afraid to say, do you have your proper permits? Yeah, For you to uh, ask me. Then they're going to say, oh, right. you know, the, yeah. don't, don't use him. He's, don't he's worry like a, he's about a, it. He's a whistleblower know? or whatever. Right, right. And they, they all try to cut corners because they have no money. How many, right. you know, and as a matter of fact, Andre, to fund this production, he had to do a Kickstarter himself. I mean, and not that I expect a lavish production. This guy came on the set, didn't even have coffee for nobody. <laughs> what he did was he took his grandmother's coffee maker out of her kitchen, it looks like, and plugged it into the wall. Like the Mr. Coffee Maker. I was waiting for Joe DiMaggio to walk by. <laughs> yeah, well, there are many ways of cutting corners, and certainly, um, you know, you were the one that got caught with the hot potato, you know, right, it, it right. stopped with you, unfortunately. So mm -hmm. where do you go from here? I'm trying to, like I said, I'm, I'm, I got to get uh, an attorney who is well versed in this. I just can't hire anybody. Does he have to be in New Jersey? Uh, well, he has to be yeah. barred in New Jersey. Yep. He doesn't have to, you know, and he doesn't uh, have to reside. I right. just, right. it's just, I just want to go back to doing my, con I'm a comedian first and foremost. I started in 1987 uh -huh. and acting was something that I always wanted to do. And I started doing it like I've done Blue Bloods. I've done Law and Order as for you, and it's a night and day difference. Those, you go in to do Law and Order as for you, you're in and out in six hours. And you can't even walk. If you're a CSU I tech, was there yesterday. It was or, five hours. Or, you know what I'm saying? You're around five or six hours. Yes. It's like the military. If you're playing any kind of law enforcement, if you walk outside, turn your jacket inside out. Yep. You can't walk out the door with or a cover. gun. You can't have right. a badge on. Right. Yep. Nothing. Right. Well, yeah. and the guns are often now, because I've been doing this for a number of years now, and I play uh, NYPD in a number of the shows, and the props guy, there's, there's actually a props person oh, he's like the, who yeah. handles the guns. And even when you're working on a stage, when you enter the set, that's when you get your, your exactly. sidearm. And then when you leave, even if you're going to Crafty, they take it back. And right. I was in Manhattan right after the San Bernardino, and we had to walk five blocks to props to get our collar brass, and we're all in Absolutely. police you know, uniforms with badges and everything, and, and I was a wreck, even though this was a production that <laughs> right. you know, was very, it was Rap blue blood. Too. Yes. Unfortunately, <laughs> Joyce, you're never going to see that on the level of an independent movie, because they don't have the money, right. they don't have the resources. You're so absolutely right. What, what I want to do now is, I don't want what happened to me to happen to other people. So I'm going to raise awareness. And hopefully this will make, you know, sometimes you got to question stuff. And, and it's just not right what happened. Listen, I understand that I did this with my eyes wide open, but I never a thought would have uh, come to this. Why would you ever think that? Never. What, you know, I, you don't. I just... It's so surreal. I just, I'm just i waiting for somebody to tell me that this is like a, a, a dream. dream. Right, Ashton something. Kusher. Is yeah, yeah, this a punk scene? Yeah. Uh, you know? <laughs> You just have to uh, be patient and um, just keep doing what you're doing. And Hopefully, usually yeah. the right thing prevails. But it seems to me that the key is with Mr. Joseph. And uh, is there any way of contacting him? Is there any way of putting pressure on him through, you know, some of the media outlets have these shame on you segments, you know, well, that uh, can help you out with, research that you may not be able to be, um, you know, to access. Yeah. Um, well, that's another thing where the lawyer comes in when he, he's got to hire investigators and stuff to get to the bottom of this and, and dig a little deeper. But I do want to give props to Howard Thompson from Pix11 because yes. he's the one that started this whole ball rolling. He I was the Pix first 11. one to give me the time of day <laughs> yeah, about my great. story. I mean, yeah. I've reached that when I finally said, you know what, I, I got to do this. Uh, you know, I got to get, you know, and he reached out to me and then everybody... Once it started, uh, then I put up the GoFundMe, and then people started, like, are you, and then now every other day I'm getting reporters the calling nice me. The nice thing is that mm. they're all keeping in touch with him just to That's see great. what his progress is. Well, they, basically, with these reports, they wait for it to get to such a level of hotness. You know, I mean, what happened to you is terrible, uh, but they're waiting for that, like, that build. Like the and blood. then once, you know, it gets to that build, um, they will I, probably I want to actually get on Good on Morning it. America and, 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 and you probably sure. And you probably could. Sure. But I, I, I want to. I think that will happen, though, after legislation takes place. <laughs> um, I honestly think that what happened is beyond, um, is beyond the gun law. I, yeah. I just think that police officers who do a great job and put their lives mm -hmm. on the line every day, 
they have to have the ability to assess the situation for what it is. Right. And when you arrest somebody, and you hold, I understand you were held for four days, right. okay, while Gisela worked very hard, and you had a lot of reality checks yes. in friends bad. of yours. I felt bad for her because she doesn't know. She's like Bambi. She's like, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm from the streets in Newark. I, you know, I know, you know, so it was, it, was, it was more frustrating for me knowing that I shouldn't have been in there. And for her, she, was, she couldn't sleep. She was a, a nervous sleep. wreck. She didn't oh, I'm sure. And, I, I, and I, for I, you and to have your freedom taken away for four days had to have been a real eye-opener. It was right before Thanksgiving. Well, so all I kept thinking was I need to get him home oh, yeah. for the mm -hmm. holidays. He, right. you know, I want to see him sitting at the dinner table for Thanksgiving. Sure. He doesn't belong in jail. And Did I just went crazy. It, it, I got him home Wednesday right before Thanksgiving. Oh, wow. Very yeah. good. So I was That's fortunate. You know, and, and you know what? I felt bad for her because as she was explaining to me, Every time she did something, something would happen, yeah. and it would become undone. Like, Divine intervention. It was like right. God wanted him in there. And tell us what happened when you reached out <laughs> to certain really good friends um, and how they were willing to help. I was surprised. Uh, one of his good friends, I thought it was a high school friend, turns out not to be. You know, he put me in a position, and in front of the officer nonetheless, to say that, sure, you know, I'll give you the money, come over, let's hit it and quit it. And I don't know what that means because I'm, you know, I grew up from an Italian family, and, you know, I didn't know <laughs> I what a lot of things what meant. Means. Yeah. Yeah. And the officer yeah. knew what that meant. And yes. he said to me, um, I will not repeat that to Carlo, because he's really in a dark place, and he doesn't need yeah. to know that. I love yet. the innocence about her. She's so <laughs> fun. She's been, like, protected all her life, and that's a good thing. Uh -huh. But sometimes the naive, you know, just the fact that so. not knowing, like, but she I, rose to the so occasion. She did. So, She's a trooper. Uh, She's I'm a surprised I did. She, ad she advocated for you. Yeah. You yeah. Know, I get a kick out of her sometimes. Just to, you know, like when she, when she came to Jersey, because she's from Brooklyn, from Staten Island to Jersey, like I would tell her, do you want, I'm going to make eggs. Do you want some Taylor ham or pork roll? She's like, what's that? I just get a kick uh -huh. out of the uh -huh. innocence. Like some of the things, she didn't know what an Italian hot dog was. In Newark, we grew up on them. Now, let me just bring you... I have to tell you, I don't know what an Italian hot dog is. I'm is from like Sicily. The <laughs> sausage? No, no, it's, a, it's they cut the, the, the pizza bread with this. It looks like a big lifesaver bread. They cut it in half, they slice it open, uh, mustard on the bottom, they put two hot dogs, potatoes, peppers, onions, and uh, ketchup on the top. And they oh, call, it's dietary. Oh, oh, oh yeah, very, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Give me an angiogram afterwards. <laughs> now, Carlos, let me just ask you, um, how has this affected your career? What are you doing um, while you're trying to combat this? Well, I just, because of the bail situation, I finally, because of the, 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 um, the generosity on GoFundMe, I finally raised enough to finish paying off the bail bonds because it was like paying a loan shark every week. Wow. So now I, have to, I wasn't able to travel. And I, I'm on the road all the time doing comedy, so I couldn't travel. What so was I, your parameters? I had to stay in Jersey. Wow. You know, and I usually travel this way. So stay. have you been able to do work? I just finally was able to leave this Saturday to go to Baltimore because I paid him off last week. Mm -hmm. Other than that, if, if, it wasn't, if it wasn't in state, I wasn't able to do it. And mm -hmm. you live in New Jersey, I hope. Yes. Oh, I live, okay. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, I had, a, I had to go uh, all over, and, and, uh, and I just wasn't able. And I lost my credit cards. All my bills lapsed, I, 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 and it, it got, it's like a, it was a pit. Mm. And, and it's, it's like he, we were in quicksand for a while. It, yeah. sure. And even now that, he, you know, the no. bail is paid, he still has to check in. So until this is done, he yeah. has to check in with the bail people until just, the case is solved. And so, you don't have a, a, a court date? Not as no. of yet, no. I'm just waiting. It's like a, it's in limbo, and that's, I hate that because sure. not knowing, the not knowing is killing me. Well, yes. we wish you so, the very best of luck. And, and we're running out of time here. Okay. So if you can repeat that GoFundMe page again. Yes, it's www.gofundme.com forward slash raw deal. For anybody that wants to help, if I reach my goal, I can hire a big enough attorney to fight this because I had a couple of people speak on my behalf to the prosecutor, and they're, they're, they're grinding an ax for me. Why, I don't know. It's they don't ridiculous. like to be wrong. No, <laughs> you know. Today, I guess I must look like John Dillinger to them. It, it's certainly a hot... Topic. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So I thank you, ladies, for having yes. me. On. Thank you. And we and thank, thank you, you for Giselle. coming. You're yes. Thank you. My it was pleasure. Nice to meet you. You too. And good luck. So stay tuned for the filmmakers show. It's coming up in a couple of minutes.